Here's the calcaneus, the talus, the navicular, the cuneiforms, first, second, and third, and the cuboid. Let's see the same bones again from beneath, the calcaneus, the cuboid, the cuneiforms, the navicular, and the talus again. Now we'll look at the metatarsals. Like the toes, the metatarsals are numbered one through five. The first metatarsal is more massive than the others. The second metatarsal is the longest. On the base of the fifth metatarsal, there's a prominent tubercle. The metatarsals are slightly curved from end to end. The heads of the metatarsals lie in one flat plane, but their bases form an arch from side to side, as do the tarsal bones that they articulate with. These are the three cuneiform bones and the cuboid. These are the tarsometatarsal joints. There's very little movement at any of them. The bones of the foot are arched in two planes, from side to side, as we've just seen, and also from end to end. The big toe has only two phalanges, a proximal and a distal. The other four toes have three phalanges, proximal, middle, and distal. These are the metatarsophalangeal joints, or MP joints for short. The joints between the phalanges are the interphalangeal joints. Here's the foot with all the soft tissues removed and all the joints and ligaments intact. On the dorsum of the foot, there's an almost continuous layer of ligaments connecting the tarsal bones both to each other and to the metatarsals, and connecting the heads of the metatarsals together. The ligaments on the dorsum of the foot are strong ligaments, but the truly impressive ligaments, the ones which support the longitudinal arch, are on the underside of the foot. First, here's the short plantar ligament. It goes from here on the calcaneus to here on the cuboid bone. Just in front of the short plantar ligament is the groove for the perineus longus tendon. Lying directly beneath the short plantar ligament is the long plantar ligament. The long plantar ligament also starts here on the calcaneus and goes all the way to the bases of the third, fourth, and fifth metatarsals. The long plantar ligament bridges over, or rather under, the perineus longus tendon. Here's the tendon going to its insertion on the base of the first metatarsal. There's another, even more impressive structure that supports the arch of the foot, the plantar aponeurosis. The plantar aponeurosis is a massive sheet of tendon-like tissue that runs the whole length of the foot. It starts here on the calcaneus. It fans out as it runs forward. As it approaches the MP joints, the plantar aponeurosis splits into five divisions. Most of the fibers of each division pass into two slips, which pass forward and upward toward the MP joint. We'll see where they go in a minute. Here's the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. It goes all the way from the first MP joint to the fifth. The flexor tendon sheaths, which we'll see in a minute, are attached along these lines. Here's the MP joint with its capsule intact. Here it is with the loose parts of the capsule removed. There's a broad collateral ligament on each side. The MP joint can't flex much beyond a straight position, but it can extend all the way to here. Here's an MP joint divided longitudinally. The joint capsule is thin on the dorsal aspect, 
and massively thickened on the plantar aspect. This thick part of the capsule is the plantar ligament of the MP joint. It's fixed to the proximal phalanx here. So when the joint is extended, the plantar ligament is pulled forward. Here's the plantar ligament in the intact joint. The tendon sheath is attached to the plantar ligament here and here. Here's a short piece of the tendon sheath intact. It runs the whole length of the toe, as we'll see later. Also attached to the plantar ligament of the MP joint is the deep transverse metatarsal ligament. Here's its attachment on one side. Here it is on the other side. Here's the MP joint of the big toe, the first MP joint. It's much larger than the other MP joints, and it has two additional structures, a pair of sesamoid bones, which are enclosed within the plantar ligament. One of them's here, the other one's here. As we've seen, each division of the aponeurosis gives rise to two slips. These lie on each side of the flexor tendons. The two slips are inserted here and here on each side of the plantar ligament of the MP joint. When the MP joints are straight, the plantar aponeurosis is slack. But when they're extended, it becomes much tighter. The plantar aponeurosis acts as a continuation of the Achilles tendon. When it's tight, as it is when the MP joints are extended, it enables the pull of the calcaneal tendon to be transmitted directly to the metatarsal head. Here are the metacarpals, the proximal phalanges, the middle phalanges, and distal phalanges, the tarsometatarsal joints, the metatarsophalangeal joints, and the interphalangeal joints. Here are the short plantar ligament, the long plantar ligament, and the plantar aponeurosis. Here's the deep transverse metatarsal ligament, the flexor tendon sheaths, and the plantar ligament of the MP joint.